Knut is a, a dating coach, if I'm right. Knut. Yeah, well, yeah. That's yeah. One, of, one of many titles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we will uh, dive into the to the topic of dating and I'm really curious because I don't have any clue what Knut is talking about and he's a bit tired so I will fire out some questions and he will just give us some stories, answers, whatever shows up. Like there's different people, like right? Some people, they are very lonely because they literally don't have people in their life like I was. Like they literally spend so much time by themselves that it gets to them because human nature wants to be social um, or wants to feel loved. But then you have the next guy who's like, he has a social life, like he has his schoolmates, he has his work colleagues, he has people that he hangs around with for bowling uh, every Friday. Um, <laughs> he, he has people he hangs around with. He's, he goes to parties, he has a normal social life. He still feels lonely because there's just something missing in that connection and that love that we really want, that, that depth of connection um, and that goes for people who have socialized but also people who have a lot of girls in their life like guys who have girls in their life or women who meet have no problems finding men but they have a real struggle really connecting on a deeper level um, so um, one of the big realizations for me came in Mexico uh, no no one of the big realizations for me came through well that's another realization but this big realization just came to me it's kind of like somehow down the path where I realized that I always thought that something was wrong with me. I always thought that people didn't spend time with me or hang around with me because of uh, I was just meant to not be that guy. I was meant to be alone. I was meant to not connect. That was who I was and I was sad about it. I had this image in my mind of being a lone wolf at 80 years old. And <laughs> And, you know, like regretful and bitter and sad because nobody loved me and die alone. Uh, and that's the kind of image that you find now in like sales marketing messages. But I literally had that in my mind for myself. Um, but, and it's, it's crazy because I talked with a guy just the other day who told me the story of his life and it was so much worse than mine but it was so similar in the sense of just feeling completely lost in a world with so many people and feeling so disconnected <laughs> which is crazy right we yeah <laughs> and whatsapp and instagram and we are more part of each other's lives in some ways than ever before and yet we are still more disconnected in so many other ways so so I'm getting to, yeah. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> this guy, when I said hi to him and I said, um, do, you, do you want my help? He said, who are you? What do you want? I don't trust you, but my friend trusts you. So I'm going to give you a chance. But don't fool me. So that was the first thing he put up, right? So, and it reminded me of myself because it wasn't so much that something was wrong with me. It was that I was pushing everybody away. I was building all these walls. Um, and I wouldn't let anyone in because I was so scared of being hurt, even by friends, that maybe they liked me and then they liked me for getting something out of me or they liked me and then they would leave me or for some whatever reason, I was just death scared of being hurt by the consequence of loving. So you would say it was never the other people, never the outside world and always you who was responsible for your life circumstances or how you felt about life. Yeah. I mean, sure. There's, there's many opportunities to say it was the other way around, but even to the point where it wasn't even my social skills, it wasn't even my charm. It wasn't even anything of that. It was just that I wouldn't let people in. I was showing people just like, uh, just like a superficial outgoing charismatic man would maybe show his, fake mask to people to be like <laughs> you also have you also had me who were withdrawing and pulling back and, and not talking to people at all and not showing myself at all so I would show people only my introverted shy mask or I would show people only my sides on the days that I felt a little better but I didn't leave anything open to for people to connect with I didn't put myself out there I wasn't in people's radar 
so they had no choice but to <laughs> judge me and leave me where I was. Like, how could how could anyone? <laughs> I was, I was like, it was like, I was screaming for connection and love behind all these walls. But every time someone came knocking on the door, I would shoot at them with cannons or pretend I wasn't home. <laughs> and then I wonder why people run for the hills. And I'm fucking scared to be with me. <laughs> I can't figure it out. <laughs> but I think that's a lot of people right there. It's, it's, uh, it's that paradox of humanity of wanting and desiring and craving to be loved, to craving to have connection, to craving to let go and just surrender to someone. And meanwhile, also knowing that if you do that, if you really love someone, then you could also get hurt. So we try to push open the door to go into the room of love, but every time we open it a little bit, this little fear comes in that says, maybe it isn't love. Maybe it's pain. <laughs> <laughs> isn't that true? Yeah. Yeah, from my own experience, I also had the same view. Like, 100% you, you want love. You want to show people how you feel about them. But on the other side, you, you just withdraw. And it's yeah. like, you don't show really what you're up to. And people can sense it. They always feel like this person wants something, but not giving anything. And yeah, it's not like always putting putting up this mask, and it it does not feel good. It it feels like there's no connection. Could you talk about your um your travels and especially about this um yeah connection you had with the people traveling the whole world? Mm, yeah, because um, I had a lot of stories in Mexico. Which one are you referring to? <laughs> <laughs> um, a short a story that would would illustrate you connecting with other people in a in a way that you never had seven years before. That you really that you were just not putting on some mask and really showing up as the Knut Johannesson. He really is. <laughs> who, who knows who that guy really is? But <laughs> well, it's true. You, you always keep uh, peeling off layers. I don't think there is anything such an as an authentic person, just as there is no good or bad person. There's just an authentic expression in the moment. And the more you learn about yourself and know yourself, I guess, the more that expression comes out. Um, yeah, I... This is a lot. This is this is starting to become a long time ago for me to talk about. But it's um, when I had these realizations, it kind of dawned to me that um, I hadn't been very generous with myself, um, or showing myself or giving myself. Um, and traveling also taught me that there's seven billion people on the planet you really get to see the people you really get to see that if people don't like you at one place they like you in the next place even though you show off the exact same guy they love you in one place and they hate you in one place and you wonder is there what did i do wrong in that place <laughs> but i'm the same person right and it's like so so i kind of realized that um since i've been trying to make people like me or trying to uh, seduce or trying to create love, um, I was always putting up this front, this mask, this um, trying to get something. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I walk into a bar or club in, in Mexico and outside of the tourist areas and girls, every girl in the bar turns around to see this two meter tall <laughs> walking in, right? and I talk with people and I, I, you know, the girls come and talk to me and it's like, they, they just want me, not because of my personality, not because of anything that has to do with me, but just because of my looks. <laughs> I can feel they want to get something, right? And it's really fun in the beginning, like yeah. really fun. <laughs> but, but after a while, it gets like empty, really empty. And I can tell, I can relate that so much to girls now that has that are really, really beautiful, and they walk in somewhere and uh, they just feel not seen. 
Um, so I had these ex all these ex experiences, and it taught me that uh, you know if, if it is really like this, that people will like me and love me some places, and then they will uh, not like me some places, even though I'm the same guy. Then you know maybe all this stress and worry and trying to be something that is generally attractive. I wasn't stressing and worrying about it that much, really. But I, it was kind of like under the surface that I wasn't 100% myself. Um, so I, I kind of dropped that and realized that, you know what, I, all I can really do is shift my perspective from trying to make them like me to figuring out if I like them. Mm. Like what is attractive about them? What can I offer them? What can I give to them? How, are they, how is their world? What is really happening with them? And stop being so self-absorbed, I guess, in, in me and trying to get that attention or get that uh, love or get that attraction going. Uh, but rather shift it around and see what attracts me about this person. And the craziest thing happened is that when I started showing up in a way of that where I was giving a lot, and one and being very an out, outflow of energy and trying to be really present and notice what's going on for other people, I could connect. <laughs> 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 and I didn't have to worry about not saying things that, you know, that I've been lonely in the past. You'd be amazing. Like that's something that everybody says you shouldn't say that you've been lonely in the past or that you are lonely sometimes, um, even to this day. And, and, how so many people just like really you can say wow well, me too and you connect them <laughs> it's amazing um at one point i met a girl in and after really getting over a lot of stuff i met a girl in mexico uh, in, um, in a little village where i got to after i randomly popped into a catholic wedding <laughs> <laughs> well of all things they ate tacos how you know crazy is that <laughs> and we f she fell we fell in love and one time in bed she she looks up at me and she says i love you and i never heard that before i've been with a lot of women in my life but i never heard anyone say that with such intensity and such strength that she really meant it and i i reacted with uh, with uh, the smoothest most charismatic <laughs> 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 And this was after, after so many women I met in my life, right? And so many, much exploring. But I, I realized that I, if, if this is like the connection of friendship, I could go so close to someone as long as I would keep my power, right? Yeah. As long as I wouldn't open, as long as I would still hold on to the door, to, to the room of love, so I could always close it down and shut it down <laughs> if, if it got too scary. <laughs> uh, so I, I kind of did that. I went really close to her, but then I stopped. And I didn't even realize it myself. She looks up at me and she says, I love you. And I don't need to say it back. I just love you. And I had to say it to you because I couldn't hold it in anymore. Uh, and I remember how she said it because before people had said it to me, it was always like, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> say it back, please. <laughs> Always oh, more about them getting the love than giving, uh, than actually just having a pure expression of love, right? Uh, so when she said that, it just, at first I was stunned and after I, I realized, wow, I really love her too. And then when I said it, it was like a huge release of energy and just like, ah, oh, wow, I, I've been holding this door so long, it's been exhausting. The, the time that follows is just incredible and amazing and I felt so lost and connected at the same time. But it really took that for me to break that barrier of trusting love, as, as woo-woo as that sounds, <laughs> and, uh, and surrendering to it. So since that, I really, it really hammered into me that, wow, maybe it's not so much about trying to control love control attraction but maybe it is, has more to do with surrendering to what is already there just surrendering to those feelings um, and then I met this guy Zan here in Bucharest and he said recently or he said a long time ago but he said it again <laughs> that, <laughs> that what he said he said the greatest power of seducer is 
every, every great seducer now that is power over women comes from the power they have over him. And that the more he surrenders to that power that they have, whatever that is, the more, uh, the more that connection can naturally just unfold. Like relating it back to peace for the world, what do you think is, is the number one thing that is not wrong, but like that you would say is not right when people look at dating that would like trans transform everything where people showing up in the world? If you look around, people, are, people aren't generally very connected with each other. Um, there's a lack of empathy somewhere. And some of the things that people do in this world is, would be completely impossible with a strong sense of empathy and connection, not just with the immediate people around you, but with, with human beings around the world, right? Um, and I think uh, that love is something that's naturally there for us. We, we, we all have it in us. And sometimes when we feel in the best state or we feel the most excited or we feel like our life really works or, or something great happens, then we, we, and we feel really that love for someone, um, then a lot of our frustrations kind of are flushed away in that moment of pure ecstasy of love. Uh, a lot of our worries and concerns and jealousy and, and you know, like um, anger and uh, hate. Uh, it's hard to feel hate when you're in a state of love, right? <laughs> uh, it's really hard. It's really hard. Like when, when you're really at your most happy, it's really, there's nobody who stands there on their, on their wedding night, you know, watching their, the, the wife, the woman of the dreams, walk up the aisle with a smile on her face and a tear in her cheek. And they think, oh, I fucking hate those Muslims. Like, <laughs> there is nobody, right? Or I, oh, I, just, I, these stupid people in, you know, in, in, uh, in the poor neighborhoods, we should put them away in jail because they sell marijuana. Like, we don't, we don't think about that because we're such, uh, you know, immersed in this experience of beauty and love. And you find people that when they're in those states, they, they give more, you know, someone comes and ask in that state, someone comes and asks them for charity and they're like, yeah, sure. And, it gives, <laughs> away. and it's like, wow, we wouldn't do that yesterday. Well, you know, it's my wedding night. Um, so I feel like if we could tap more into that, that energy or that side of us that really have empathy and love and love for humanity, and love for each other and, all that stuff that we talked about way back in time when we were wearing torn up jeans and played guitar. <laughs> and I think that, well, it's true. I think it, the world would be a better place and we wouldn't get caught up so much in the smaller things in life. I think there's a lot of lonely people, disconnected people who, who could uh, be a lot less angry if they felt the love of a beautiful woman, for example. So we met two years ago and... Yes, we did. Yeah. Uh, we've been to the, like the, the Morton Harker Summit. Yeah. And afterwards, you went to a workshop with Jamie Smart. That's true. That's true. And I also read his book and it transformed me in a way that like was not possible before. I read his book, Clarity. And beforehand, I always thought that I was lacking something, that something is missing. When I was speaking to women, talking to people, it was always that I want to get something because something is missing with me. Something is wrong. I'm not enough. And after I read his book, I realized that I was telling myself the story for 10 years that I'm not enough. I compared myself with people. Mm -hmm. And there was this clear moment where, where I saw that I was making it all up and that I was enough all the time. And that right. I don't need some people, that I don't need a girlfriend, that I don't need sex from, from people, whatever. And it really transformed my life. It was more afterwards about giving, not about taking and really showing up as 
as authentic as possible. So um, having that said, you also went to the workshop. What did change for you hearing this message about clarity and about the, the things Jamie Smart was talking about? Um, so for me, the changes were, um, so it's kind of like at the time when I went to the workshop, I had, exp I had kind of stepped into that, uh, worldview when it came to my relationships. Um, not that much of change since it's just been like an explanation for a lot of things. Mm -hmm and a reaffirming of a lot of beliefs. But um, what really changed for me was when I came into business, um, I, I tend to forget that. <laughs> so, you know, I, I would have a super loving, amazing, open, free way of relating to uh, women and, and friends. But when it came to my business relationships or just business in general, I would worry and get like concerned and I would get caught up in stress from thinking basically. Um, and, and it kind of dissolves because once you re once I realized what he was talking about, it doesn't make sense anymore to get caught up in thinking. So for me, the, you know, the, the, I, it never really had, I never really thought about it and the impact it had on my relationships, but I thought about it way more when it came to, to uh to my business experience and in a way what i think what clarity helps people to do is to just find a, a way to see the world where or understand the world where it just brings them a massive sense of relief that they don't have to they don't have to anything anymore or should not anything anymore um what is it? People should all people should all over themselves all the time. And I did it in business, uh, but I think it, it's universal across across the board. Really, um, it's kind of a different way to, s to say what I've been saying about relationships so far. <laughs> he just released a new book called The Little Book of Clarity. I yeah. Read it. It's supposed to be a, a more condensed, to the point, easier to read uh, and grasp kind of book that he wrote. Yep. I'm really excited to read that. <laughs> yeah. So has your, has your relationships changed since that? You said, you talked about the, the shoulds. Yeah. I should do... And before I, I had this realization that, that I was enough, that I was creating it myself. I always said the thing that I should talk to a person, that I should approach this girl. And I made myself this, this challenge that I approach the first cute girl every day. And I gave something to people, but oftentimes it was more about me doing something and then like walking up to a girl and saying, hey, I think you're a really pretty girl. And I meant it, but it was more about taking something and it did not feel right. Sometimes I walked around half an hour just thinking, okay, who's the right girl to approach? And it was all about me <clears throat> and all about getting something. And in the end, I didn't get any, uh, nothing back. Like there was no real connection to the, to the people I yeah. talked to. And a lot of people go through that, you know, uh, you know, most people never approach anyone like that at all. Like that in itself is pretty impressive. But uh, when it comes to like, just in our, it's, I think a lot of men, uh, but also and mostly men, I think gets very bitter and angry because they, and it's not because uh, women have been so mean to them, but they're angry at women because they aren't giving them what they really want. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah and you can imagine when you show up with that energy in the back of your mind like hey you're really cute and in the back of your mind like i hate women <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a what a countering philosophy yeah yes i think you you mentioned zen 
Zen Perian. I, I read his book, The Alabaster Girl, and beautiful, yeah. It's so beautiful. Like it's simple, so that simple. Like he's just loving the women. And just showing up with this love and really appreciating women, it, it changed everything for me. Like in, in three months of time, I I met a girl, I fell in love right from the start. I I think I sent you the message as well. Um, after I I had this realization that um, that I'm already enough, I figured out that, yeah, I don't have to get a girlfriend. Because before that time, I always wanted to force to find a girl and never did. So... I was okay with myself and in three months of time I I connected with people easy, easier and then at this one one point I I was okay with myself. I said to myself, Okay, it's fine if I'm if I'm not having a relationship and then I saw this girl and after two seconds I knew, yeah, she's right for me. And my whole body felt it. Like ne- like I never had it before. And I was so nervous and I knew yeah, it's just my thinking. It's just I'm making it up. But I was so nervous and I couldn't talk to this girl. I I was like, intellectually, I knew it, but I, I was so nervous. But in the end, I um, I kind of talked to her in a very shy way, but she liked me, kind of. And <laughs> somehow we managed to, to, to chat with each other and then I had the courage to ask her for a Skype and then to ask her if he wanted to, to meet. And yeah, now we're we're still together, and yeah, it's it's beautiful how how it's not so much about doing stuff and forcing yourself to do things, but just just seeing that the connection is is already there, and that you that you are already okay. And if you're already okay, it's not so much about taking something or getting something, but yeah, just showing up as you are and realizing that if you meet the right person, it's the connection is already there. I love that story. That's a, <laughs> well, it's a great example, right? Like, and I don't think that, that Jamie or anyone who wrote the book Clarity about you feeling your thinking meant that that means that when you're in a situation, you shouldn't feel. You know, that that yeah. would take all the excitement and joy away from it. I, I'm all about that. To, to see a girl walking down the street and feel excited and nervous and, and panicky and still go up there and talk with all that stuff in you, it's incredible. And it's real and raw and she can feel that. And I think that's something we want to see. We want to see authenticity. Um, and then also, you know, that you know that this experience is your experience so that if, you, if it doesn't work out, then you, you don't need to weigh it down and see that, oh, wow, it's, it's me, a terrible person. But also realize that you just walked up to a random person in a huge pool of people <laughs> on the street and she could have, uh, you know, her dog could have just died. She just came walking home from her being fired you know or she her 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 ex-boyfriend said exactly the same thing as you did <laughs> uh you know or maybe you just not her type but there's there's a, there's a thousand different factors for why a person likes you or don't like you maybe she liked you because of your looks and you're sitting here talking to me and you'd be oh i was, I was shy and i was honest and real and authentic and she doesn't even care about that she just liked your hair <laughs> we, don't even we don't even know that Thank you. So it's crazy, crazy that we walk out and we meet people and we make it all about ourselves yeah as without any empathy or any understanding or any uh realization the fact that we're all humans and we have different ways of relating to each other and different experiences day to day and emotional states and there's a whole ocean of reasons for why we, we react or respond or like or don't like or love or don't love. <laughs> you <know? laughs> so, you, you know, even further, you have people in relationships and then they, something happens. Like, for example, cheating, right? You know, the person you love cheats on you. And then a lot of people make it all about themselves. Like, wow, did I do something wrong or did I... Uh, Am I not enough or am I not good enough for the other person? So, so there's like, you know, there's that again, right? Or you, you get a good connection, but someone won't commit to you. And it's like, well, it's because I'm not right. Mm. Uh, we make up all these stories in our mind where we uh, end up judging ourselves or limiting ourselves, not realizing that if we got all that stuff out of the way, all that 
thinking and self-limiting and self-restricting and simply gave and showed up fully as as ourselves with everything we have including the shyness including the nervousness including the pain and loneliness including the frustrations with the world you know everything if we can put all that on the line then people can actually connect to us and they can have a chance <laughs> <laughs> so i i see it now much more as you know if you go up and talk to someone it's more of an offering of the opportunity to connect yeah and, that, and then everything else that happens is kind of out of your hands at that point the perfect <laughs> word to end this episode <laughs> yeah there you go man yeah, lovely. I really liked it. Really loved it. And yeah, I hope everybody who, who saw this series, uh, this episode also got something out of it. And um, if people feel like talking to you, maybe also about uh, this um, showing up as your se uh, real self and connection, how could they approach you? They can't. They can't. <laughs> I'm really hard to get to these days. Yeah. Uh, probably around the world. I guess, you know, as any human being today, I'm, I'm also connected on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So if you go to facebook.com slash K-N-U-T-M-J, Knut M-J, yep. you will find me. And if you send me a message, I will know that you are a decent human being. And <laughs> we're good friends. Maybe yeah. chat. And you can ask me anything you want. Um, I'm hard to get to, but I'm easily accessible once you get to me. Ah, okay. Yeah. I, huh? That's right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs>